this stock has scaled up and their stores have become a can't-miss destination for nearly 100 million members. America is buying in bulk. Should home gamers join the club and put some Costco in their portfolio? Before we left the West Coast last week, we checked in with Costco at their flagship store in Issaquah, Washington. Now, this longtime Kramer fave big box chain has been a huge winner for shareholders, ah. rallying about 50% over the past 12 months. And it just keeps climbing. Today, it surged another 2.8% after Oppenheimer upgraded Costco, citing the company's bullish outlook and the fact that the stock has not run as much as others here. Now, could it have more room to go higher? On Friday. We spoke to Craig Jelinek, Costco's bankable president and CEO who does very little TV. I need you to take a look at this. You have 100 million members. I think a lot of people believe it's the price. Other people believe it's the treasure hunt. I think it's the people. We always see the same people for years. How do you keep them? Well, I think since the beginning when, uh, you know, our founder, Jim Senegal and, and Jeff Brotman, uh, when the company started, you know, we always wanted to have great prices, never do it on the back of your people, pay good wages. And one of the things that we always wanted to do was pay great wages. If you look at our employees that have been around for our employees 10 years or more, they make almost $29 an hour. Our average wage is about almost $25 an hour. Uh, so it's just wages, and we think we're a good place to work. We pay benefits. Uh, we've got great people. We want people to stay for the long term. We have 401ks. And it's just great when you have great people who stay with you and are loyal to the company. And it's, uh, it's just the right thing to do. It is counterintuitive in America to think that you can offer the best benefits and the highest wages and still have incredible profit margins. Jim told me the churn, the way that turnover at all the other stores makes it so that you can afford to have those, those profit margins and still do better than everybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want longevity. You want good employees. They, they know their jobs. They be, show you ways to become more efficient as a company. You're only as good as the employees that work with you. Now, you have a few more than 500 stores, 546 stores in America, a uh, total of 785, and yet you're you're the third largest. How can you have so few stores and be the third largest? Well, as you probably know, we're not a margin company, right. we're a volume company. And we need a lot of volume going through these, as we call them, warehouses. So that's really what it's about. We do a lot with very few units. Uh, we sell, turn a lot of inventory, and it just works the best way for us to, to do it that way. We will continue to expand our Costco's, but uh, we're not going to have one on every corner. Okay, this is a beautiful store that you have here. Uh, I am told that this is where you sold that $450,000 piece of jewelry. How can you have such a diverse clientele that really kind of encompasses everyone in America? Well, you know, one of the things that we do, no matter what your, where you are in terms of incomes, everybody wants a value, right? And that's one thing that we've done from day one is we bring quality merchandise at the best possible price. And we do it on and everywhere that we sell merchandise. That's the way we run our business. Now, uh, the notion that you can have full employment and not have a lot of inflation, I think depends on the likes of your store. You can do huge volume. Obviously, there must be some tension between volume and price here. But you're part of the reason why we don't have inflation in this country. Well, that's certainly very nice of you to say. Uh, we, we have a responsibility to figure out how little we can make off of, of a product instead of how much how we can little. make a product. Right? We want to sell a lot. We're in the volume business, not the margin business. That works worldwide as a concept, correct? Yes. Absolutely. It even works in Shanghai, where you had been reluctant to do business in China, you personally, but it looks like you're almost, some would say, too successful in Shanghai. Well, the, it's, you know, it, we're very early in the game. Um, when we opened up in Shanghai, uh, we opened up very strong, and 
We were not, we were actually not ready for the amount of traffic that came into that building. You opened and closed the same day. Absolutely, absolutely. So we had to go through a lot of crowd control and uh, we had to go through and learn a lot of things. But uh, we learned a lot. Uh, we opened up the next day and it's business as usual over there. I have some great shirts. Uh, they're made in Indonesia. Is that in a way to be able to avoid Chinese tariffs? No, we've just, that's not it at all. We, uh, we've had a, a factory over there. Well, when I say a factory, our supplier has made the shirts over there. We've been with this supplier probably now who's been making our Kirkland Signature shirts for 20 plus years and they do a very good job and uh, they're great quality shirts. I'm glad you mentioned Kirkland. I have often found when I, and I'm proud to be a long-term shopper at Costco. I've often found that the Kirkland brand is superior to the brand, the branded items. Most other companies would say, listen, our, that our brand is just as good as the other guy. You want it to be better. Well, we want the Kirkland brand. It's, it's our name. We, you know, we, we came up with Kirkland because our offices used to be in Kirkland. It wasn't that, you know, that sophisticated a way to come up with a name. But we wanted it to be, and, you know, we don't do any advertising, as you know. And you can put the Kirkland signature on toilet paper. You can put it on wine. You can put it on just about anything. And uh, we're proud of that brand. And if you do a good job and you build a quality item, you're going to have trust with your, with your members. Well, let's talk about uh, the stock, which has been an incredible performer. Uh, there's got to be tension between a special dividend that you give and low prices as members. I mean, it, uh, why are you giving special dividends and also uh, charging what you do uh, for membership? Because I've always tried to figure out what is the, uh, the balance of how you do your capital allocation. Well, you know, and you're very, the stock has appreciated very well. But also, a lot of people's stock has appreciated very well recently. The market's, the market's at an all-time high. You know, we want to have, you know, one of the things about low prices, you generate a lot of volume. When you generate a lot of volume, you don't generate cash. And you have a responsibility to your shareholders. And, uh, you know, the stock has appreciated. We've done special dividends in the past. We always think about when the right time might be to do another special dividend. We have no plans right at the moment, okay. but uh, we always will always look at that. Uh, you have a huge amount of money that comes in from subscription fees. Uh, how do you decide when it's time to take that price increase? Because it looks like that nobody drops off when you do it. You know, we 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 have to do it based on how we increase increase the value of the membership. Right. When we add new pieces to the membership like travel, but also when we increase that, we don't put that on the bottom line. We turn around and lower prices and work off less margins. Now, I find that because of your low prices, you can pretty much defeat anyone, including someone who is located in town, Amazon. I find better buys here than I do in Amazon. Is that conceivable? You're not gonna get some of these prices on Amazon. Well, you know, I, I don't, you worry about Amazon because it's a competitor. Right. Really what we need to do is worry about what we can do well, figure out how to lower prices, lower our expenses. The lower the expenses that we have, right, the more efficient we become, the more we can lower prices. The word that comes to mind, and I certainly find it here, this great store with these fabulous managers and people, you have a level of humility that does not exist anywhere else in corporate America. You are humble. How do you stay humble and be the greatest retailer in our country? Well, you're very kind about the greatest retailer in the country. You know, we just, as I said before, we don't really turn a lot of people. We've been very blessed with as a company because even from our founders, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work from our employees. And we don't take anything for granted because really we feel good that we have a purpose to create lower prices for people where we do business. Well, we have a responsibility to try to do that and make a little money for our shareholders.
you've mentioned the word responsibility many times. Again, very different from the low margin supermarkets I see, department stores. Is that one reason why you had 9% comps when everyone else is saying it was so promotional? You know, I think we had the 9% comps for the simple reason that we do have a great membership base. We communicate to that membership base. I think they trust us when they come in to buy merchandise that this is going to be the best price that they see when they come in for quality merchandise. And I think, uh, you know, that's just the way we run our business. I can't speak for everybody else, but I think our values that we have on merchandise just tells the story. Are you ever afraid that you give away too much? Mr. Glanny runs a fantastic conference call. You give away cannibalization numbers. You talk about 20 basis points in this country, 138 points international. You're giving away information that is secret at other stores. You know, we try to be transparent. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, we're going to talk to you about what we're going to be doing three and four years from now. Maybe not, but, you know, that's what we do. Responsible? Responsible, transparent. If we screw something up, which we do on occasion, we're going to make it right. Well, as a proud member, I've never seen you screw up, but maybe that's just the way we as consumers know you. The and guys, we, And we appreciate that. Absolutely. And it's a joy. It is still a treasure hunt. It's still the best price. Thank you. Okay, that's Craig Jelinek. He's the Costco CEO. Mr. Jelinek, thank you so much. Thank you, and we appreciate you coming back. Thank you. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.